Welcome to Sculpture Studios. A client's come to us and asked us to create a fairy tale castle for a backdrop theme for children's parties. She's a storyteller and wants a castle that she can bring to her party events to really set the scene and bring a bit of magic to the occasion. She sent us some concept images of the kind of look she was after and said she was debating how large she wanted it to be as she needs to transport it herself. We wanted to work out a size that was comfortable for her, both in terms of how large and manageable it's going to be for her to pick up and move herself, as well as an appropriate size for transportation. We designed the castle to break down into pieces in a kind of flat pack setup so it would fit in her van and she could easily put it all up in segments when she arrived. As the client wanted this to be a semi three dimensional castle, this meant it needed to be more than simply painting a few flat panels of wood. This was a job where various materials would be needed in order to create the different sections of the castle design. The round turrets we've carved from polystyrene and we're adding clay detail for the windows and the turret tops. This is all then protected and moulded and cast in glass fibre so it's nice and durable with a nice smooth finish. Here we've used what's known as a waste mould made from plaster of Paris and this means it's generally strong enough to take only one or two casts from before it's disposed of. This is a cost effective way of getting two identical models without needing to either try and carve a secondary identical pattern or by creating a more durable and more expensive glass fibre mould which is more suitable for multiple production runs. With the fiberglass turrets made, the other areas of the castle are created from wood, with thin ply that can be curved and bent into shape. We need to get rid of any sharp edges, as there's going to be children around potentially touching this, as well as the client that needs to handle the set herself. Once the carpentry is finished, of which we've tried to include a lot of detail in, the edges are sanded down, filled and smoothened down again, so it should be safe to touch. Before any of the artwork or decoration takes place, we make sure that all the construction side is complete first, in case any changes or adjustments need to be made. We make sure that everything fits together properly, and that everything stays together once it's been left freestanding. We give everything a white primer, so that all the paint has a nice base layer to start on, and for this job we're going to be using emulsion paints, as presumably the castle is only ever going to be used inside, so this should be appropriate. Another reason we're using emulsions is so the client can retouch areas with affordable and easily accessible paint if the set were ever to get damaged. She can also repaint over the existing artwork if she ever felt she wanted to change the style or theme of colours later on. As per her request, we're using nice soft shades here, and Aiden goes over with an airbrush to gently add some depth and a bit more of a 3D look. With any job, we try to accommodate for all our client's needs and in this case she particularly liked the idea of a portcullis door and these cone shaped tower tops. We always like to go that little bit extra so as to really finish this job off we've added a touch of glitter just to give the whole thing a bit of a sparkle when it catches the light. We always like to send our clients photographs of the project every step of the way so they can be kept up to date with how the work's progressing. Some people are merely curious as to how the sculptures are being made and others just want their mind put at ease to know that the work's actually getting done especially when they're on the tight deadline. With all the artwork finished, we sent the client photographs of the castle so she could take a look before it was collected from our studio. We also took photos of how the whole thing fits together so she could bring this with her as a reference just to get used to setting it all up. The two front panels are slid together first and then they lock together on the back using a latch. This should pull everything together nice and tight so it minimalizes the seam line running down the center. The portcullis then drops into place behind and finally the back section is added and bolted into position. This is raised on two legs that can be taken off and folded away for transportation purposes. Just to finish everything off, we've added two supports on the back of the whole castle that could be weighted down with sandbags for stability. Usually we opt for more sculptural pieces of work, like large scale polystyrene carving, perhaps some work in clay and fiberglass mould making, but it's nice taking on a job sometimes that's just a little bit different to break up the routine. This works out well both for our portfolio and online project videos, as well as accepting a job that adds a bit of variety to our work process. For this we had a bit of carpentry, we had to work out the construction side of the job, as well as the overall aesthetics, and this provides us with something to really get our teeth into, and something different to work on each day. With this job approved, we wrapped everything individually in bubble wrap and brown paper to keep it all nice and safe, and we got it delivered, flat pack of course. It's always nice getting feedback from customers when a job arrives, 
and here are some pictures from the client of the castle set up at one of her events. We hope she gets a lot of use out of this, and the children appreciate a bit of magic brought to each party. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.